One of the most exciting things about cruising is going to ports of call, going to new exotic places, getting off the cruise ship and exploring a new land. However, there could be some risk that goes along with that exploration. So I have 10 tips for you today surrounding cruise port safety. Hey, 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 what's up everybody? Tony with LaLitaLoca.com. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you like cruise ships, cruise news, cruise tips, cruise vlogs, anything cruise related, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on so you don't miss any of our videos. Now on to the tips. All right, tip number one for cruise port safety is to do your research. Many people have cruised to these ports before and are willing to share their experiences. There are great sites like cruisecritic.com where people go and they share their reviews of not only the cruise ships they've been on, but also the cruise ports that they've been on. It's a great way to get in there and start researching. Also other sites like TripAdvisor all usually include some sort of information about the safety, things to avoid, things to make sure you check out when you go to these cruise ports. Another great place is your government. The government has travel advisory websites and just recently Canada and the United States have introduced travel advisories specifically for cruise ports. Our friend Don over at Don's Family Vacation made an excellent video talking about these new travel advisory websites. I'm gonna give you a link above and in the description below if you want more information for that. Tip number two, probably the safest thing to do is to book an excursion with the cruise line or with a reputable third party excursion reseller. If you do it through the cruise line, the cruise line is gonna take care of getting you to the transportation, showing you around, getting you to the excursion and getting you back. Very little risk of danger when you are with a cruise line excursion and likewise a reputable third party excursion. Back to the research phase, you want to look at sites like TripAdvisor and Cruise Critic to find out which third party excursion resellers are reputable and what experience people have had with them. I would say the most safe that you could be at port is to book a group excursion, travel with the cruise line, or with a reputable third party excursion reseller. Number three, so if you are gonna venture out on your own, there's a few tips that go along with that. The first one that I would recommend is staying near the port. Many of the ports of calls have areas that cater to people coming off cruise ships, whether that be souvenir shopping, places to get food and beverage, or, or attractions that are super close to the cruise ship. These areas near the port, uh, not the same as going deep in, to a country or a port of call, but it will give you a little bit of a taste for the local flavor and it will give you the opportunity to get off the ship. Number four, if you do decide to get off the cruise ship without going on an official excursion, a good thing to do is to travel with a group of people. The adage that there is safety in numbers applies here and you are less likely to be bothered if you're with a group of five or six people opposed to if you're traveling by yourself. Number five, Minimize the temptation. The one thing you wanna to do to minimize the risk of danger when you get off at the cruise ship ports is not be too flashy with your affluence. Don't carry around a wad of cash, pull it out of your pocket and show it to everybody around you. Be very discreet when you're making transactions. Likewise, just leave your jewelry in the safe. It's the safest thing to do. I know a lot of people don't wanna part with their wedding ring and other flashy jewelry, but once you're out there with all that bling on, you really do make yourself a target. As a rule of thumb, for for us, we leave that stuff in the safe and try to minimize the temptation of flashy jewelry. And a tough one for me is don't take a lot of camera gear. My normal camera gear it consists of a tripod and a fairly good sized camera with a microphone. What I've been trying to do more and more is take smaller devices to record with. And so when I go to port, I usually take a GoPro which is a very small form factor camera, and then usually just a point and shoot that will actually fit in my front pocket. All right, we're halfway through the list. Uh, at the end, I'm gonna ask you guys what some of your tips are if they didn't make it on the list, so be thinking about it. That's gonna be the question for the comments. Number six goes along with number five. When you're in port and you are with your significant other, oftentimes you will want somebody to take your picture. It's a simple thing, but a good rule of thumb is never hand your camera or your phone to a stranger, but sometimes you're gonna have to if you wanna get that shot. And so what you wanna do is you wanna look for somebody who already has a camera that they're using, somebody that's already using their phone as a camera, and ask them to take your picture. They're less likely to take your equipment if they already have that same equipment. And what we do a lot is we say, hey, you know, can we take your picture? You take our picture, that way you have 
have somebody that's got a mutual interest in taking each other's picture and it minimizes the opportunity for your camera to get taken. This one will be a little bit controversial. Uh, I know in the past I've said when you go places like Cozumel, there's an opportunity that you could save a little money by sharing a cab ride to places like Mr. Sancho's because they charge by the, you know, the group of people, maybe the same price for four people as it is two people. It's not completely risky, but there is some chance that there might be people that are waiting for that scenario just so that they could take advantage of you. And then when you get in the cab, you could have some sort of trouble. I would just be cautious. I know that people have to fill that one out on their own, but I wanted to lay it out there. I would be a little leery about sharing a cab with somebody I don't know in one of these cruise ports. Number eight revolves around what you're gonna do with your wallet or your purse. A good rule of thumb for pickpocketing is never to carry your wallet in your back pocket. Try to get a wallet that you can carry in the front pocket. And for ladies, don't just leave your purse draped over one of your shoulders. It makes it easy for the strap to be cut or somebody to snatch and run. Best way to carry your purse when you're walking around a port is across your chest. There are also purses that are kind of made for it, cross body bags. It really can minimize not only the ease to take your stuff, but also the way people look at you. A lot of this is about presenting a posture that you don't look like you could be easily victimized. And so if you're smart enough to wear your purse across your chest, it might be an indicator that you're thinking about your safety and it might minimize your appearance as a target. Now talking about wallets and purses, the other thing that you wanna do is minimize what you take on shore as far as currency and credit cards go. Only take the cash that you think you'll need. Again, don't carry around big wads of cash. And the same thing for credit cards. Maybe you have four or five credit cards that you've taken with you on the cruise, but I would select just one credit card to use in port. That way, if something happens and your wallet gets stolen, you've only lost one credit card. You only have to deal with one loss, opposed to if you brought two or three uh, that could be a, an additional hassle for you. And then the last tip today is about your mobile telephone. Always leave your phone on airplane mode at port unless you are absolutely certain that you have a calling plan that works in the port that you're going to. Many of these ports, if your phone is in roaming mode, there are towers waiting to connect to your phone and waiting to charge you a massive amount of roaming fees. Of course, it's not a physical risk, but it could be a huge financial risk that you will find when you get home with a big cell phone bill. Question for the comment today, what other tips would you offer for people to stay safe at port? Leave a comment below. Thanks for stopping by to the La Lido Loco YouTube channel. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.